This episode is sponsored by Electronic Arts. Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Frank from Tested. So at New York Comic Con this year, we unveiled our latest costume project. It was the Sentinel Messenger Droid from EA's Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yep. Super cool. Yeah. But that's in the future for us. You guys have seen it yet. <laughs> so we're going to walk you through some of the processes of how this thing was made. Yes. So the Messenger Droid, it's a robot droid that has a holographic projection of Emperor Palpatine. And in coming up with the costume for this, we discussed many ways we could create this effect. Mm -hmm. You know, within the dome of the helmet, could we get a could we, projector in there? Yeah, like try to squeeze it in somewhere or put in a screen of some kind. Find it. Yeah, it just even though we can get really small projectors, we just couldn't get the right we couldn't figure out how to get the right angles to make it like really wrap around that and and, and do it justice. And we knew this was gonna be a performance character. Mm -hmm. There was gonna be an actor wearing this costume. So we ended up deciding the best way to solve this, to tackle this, was to use a mask and traditional special effects. Yes, silicone masks are so good these days, like it's totally gonna to be great for what this is. We could have gone the route of a prosthetic makeup, but then I would have had to like travel out there and put Gunther through hours of makeup to make him look like this. Um, but this is really quick because then it's just a slip on and with the lighting effects that we're going to put underneath it, it's going to look just like that hologram. So that's the stage where we're at right now, where you're in the process of sculpting this mask, the likeness of Emperor Palpatine mm -hmm. for Gunther the Wear. So talk me through, walk me through how the sculpting process works. Uh, do you have a, a core of Gunther underneath here? No, we didn't do a life cast on him. Um, we used the, the pretty standard Immortal core. Um, Immortal Masks makes silicone masks all the time and the cores are they fit pretty much everybody so it just makes sense to use one of these things since we have access to them so easily um, that gives a couple of caveats the the shape of the core is a little bit restricting so to interpret the the emperor's face onto that core takes a little bit of fiddling Right, and ideally you would have, if we wanted a lot of movement, for example, mm -hmm. you would do a life cast and you maybe do a prosthetic, yeah. which you've done before in the past. Yeah. That allows the actor to do a lot of expressions, but we didn't need that. For no, this. we didn't need that. And also, I don't think that Gunther's face is the perfect proportions to do a likeness of the Emperor. Whenever you're doing a likeness, you want to have somebody that has correct eye spacing and eye to mouth spacing, size of mouth, size of nose, size, shape of the head. There's so many things that go into doing a good likeness makeup. You can't just pile on all kinds of rubber and make them look like that person. It doesn't move right. So that makes this an interesting sculpting challenge. Yeah. So walk me through how you started. Well, we started with obviously reference. Always need a lot of reference. We have reference of the actor that played Palpatine, reference of the Emperor from the video game, the Emperor from Return of the Jedi. We even have some reference from some of the licensed toys because um, it's really hard to find pictures of the Emperor without his hood on. So mm. the, the toys are pretty good place to go. And when you look at the, the physical characteristics of Palpatine without mm -hmm. the hood on, yeah. what catches your eye? Where do you think people are going to notice and say, that looks like the character? Uh, is it in you know, the ridges in the forehead, the, the sullenness underneath the eyes? Well, where do you start? There, there's a lot of forms that go into any likeness makeup. And having the actor's anatomy underneath that, like that's, that's a really important thing to nail sort of first. Um, and then on top of that, you put all the characteristics like these big giant brows and this split up the middle of the ridge of his brows and then those big eye bags. That's really cool. You're talking about not only sculpting something that's going to look like Palpatine as we know from the movies, but also trying to get the actor's likeness who played Palpatine yes. underneath that sculptor as well. It's yeah. like double sculpting. Exactly, yeah. But all of those characteristics really play in. Because if you look at the, the Emperor's makeup, Pretty much his chin, his mouth, and his nose are the actor. So we have to get, we have to nail that likeness right there to really make that show. And then there's a lot of proportional things that are really funny about how that makeup goes together. Um, and I even, my buddy Mike Hill even popped by the other day and gave me a couple little notes on how to improve what I was doing. What did Mike have to say? It was little things about the nose, the, the shape, the overall shape of the face. I was sculpting it a little too thin. Um, a couple of things on the corners of the mouth and some of this chin stuff, but Mike has such a great eye that just giving me like 10 minutes of notes, like, you know, set me on a whole different direction and really helped me bring this a little bit closer. Very cool. And where is it right now? How much more work do you have to do on this? Spot? I probably have a couple more hours. There's still a little bit of fiddling. Uh, I'm starting to block in some of the detail forms, but there's, there's still a lot of stuff to do. And then from that, I assume a mold gets made yep, and we're casting? Yep, making epoxy mold. Guys over at Immortal, inject some silicone into there and then we'll paint it up. Awesome, we'll let you get back to sculpting and can't wait to see what this looks like when it gets out of the mold.
All right, Frank, this looks like a mask. So, it is a mask. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> last I left you, you were still fiddling around with that sculpture. Yeah. And you were thinking more about it. You got some consults. What did you do next? Well, it, it's really funny to try and find this kind of happy medium between all the different incarnations of the emperor. And then finally using like the videos that are coming out from this game of that hologram that's projected inside there, I decided to quit fiddling and just leave it kind of where it is because it kind of works with that hologram being a little bit weird and a little bit off. Mm. Okay, so you got the clay sculpture, but this isn't clay, this is silicone. Yeah. So I assume you have to make a mold. Yes. Where's the mold? Here is the mold. Whoa! Typically we've been doing these, you know, really nice fancy epoxy molds. This one, we kind of went um, old school, I guess, and I did uh, a stone mold, just a two-part mold, like we do everything else. Mm -hmm. um, but I was able to do both sides in one day, so that way we can get everything moving really quickly. So the advantage of making a stone mold is just fast. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's ways to do epoxy and fiberglass molds in, you know, in one day, but I mean, stone was just really quick and it was the easiest. And you know, like if you're trying to make like your own mass or do your own things, like plaster is really cheap. Um, mm. And if you screw it up, it's not that expensive. So I don't know, people should uh, go back to the old school sometimes. All right. And then you put a uh, core in there and yep. I see you poured some silicone through Injection there. Smart. Yeah. We, uh, I just sent this mold over to Immortal and since they're constantly cranking out masks, they will just stick my mold into the production and they uh, ran the silicone and seamed it up for me. So this is that casting, silicone yes. casting. And clearly it's painted. So what was yes. your approach for painting this? Again, um, we, I wanted it to look like that hologram and that hologram is kind of bottom lit. So a lot of my shadows are all, you know, on the top of ridges and, you know, so that the light would be coming from the bottom. Um, and then I also painted in some of these scan lines. Different images show the scan lines vertical or horizontal. I just went with the vertical. I thought it looked kind of nice. Um, and I just tried to paint it like the, like the game graphics. Right. It's not yeah. flesh tone. It's almost digital. Like yeah. You're evoking a lot of the, the, the cooler colors of digital imagery. Mm -hmm. And also, like, I noticed you shadowed out the back. Yeah. You'll never see any of that stuff. So there's no reason for me to, like, that's why I didn't, I took the ears off of it. Like, mm. I, it didn't make any sense for me to spend time sculpting ears. They're never, ever going to get seen. Um, so there's really nothing behind that. So all we really needed was this, this little front part. And of course, because you don't have Gunther here, you work with, work with a pretty generic core mm -hmm. and we'll have to put this on Gunther and see how it looks. Yeah. Okay, how did you think about that test fit? Um, I kind of figured that his face would push it out because this is a really slender core, um, but I think it works fine. And especially in the context of being inside that helmet and lit the way it's gonna be lit, I think it's gonna work just fine. Well, you guys have already seen, of course, Gunther in costume at New York Comic Con, but that's in, still in the future for us. But we'll be back next time with more looking into the process of making this amazing costume. Stay tuned, and Frank and I will see you next time.